you guys go and make this tiny movie called Batman Begins, um, which, I mean, it, it, I think people somewhat forget how radical that movie was in terms of reinventing the comic book genre and how you could approach um, comic books because it was such a grounded, realistic, gritty approach to this kind of thing. You know, not without humor, but um, it was kind of leaving behind the aesthetic of the Tim Burton and Joel Schubacher films. Um, what were those conver those early conversations you were having with Chris? Because it again, y we take for granted now that like, oh, you know, the Gotham City of Batman Begins, but it didn't exist until you guys got together and came up with it. I remember when Chris, Chris, had, you know, I went round uh, to his house for lunch, um, and uh, Chris, uh, you know, started talking about like he wanted to remake Batman, and uh, you know, at the time it was like. Wow, you know, you know, hasn't everything been done? Um, and and then he sort of slowly started explaining to me what he wanted to do. And um, I remember after that lunch, he sort of he was just sort of he 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 got me very excited. And he was saying, well, you know, one of the biggest things he wanted to try and do was you know redesign the Batmobile. And uh, I remember he, he he you know he specifically talked to me, so I went away. It was a Friday. I went away um, uh, and I went down to Toys R Us and bought a bunch of, <laughs> of vehicles and went over to my workshop and cut everything up and smashed them up. And I thought, well, he, you know, we talked about mixing a Lamborghini with a Humvee and, you know, so that's exactly what I thought. Well, let's just start somewhere. And so we smashed this thing together. Uh, or I did, and I left it on his doorstep on Monday morning. And then uh, he called me, and then we, he said, of course, we've got to get in here. Let's, um, let's convert my two-car garage into a workshop art department and figure out how we're going to do this film. And, you know, his thing was like, I've got to explain everything. I've got to explain why Batman is Batman and why all these things, these things don't magically work. He doesn't have any superpowers. He just, he's, he's physical and he has technology and he has his, his money. His money is his superpower. So we really just started from, from that moment. And Jonah was there, Chris's brother, uh, you know, helping as well. And uh, so we just decided to take the Batmobile to just as something to start with that might inform the rest of the film. So that's really where, when we often you read about Oh, The Garage, and that's kind of where that art room started, was like, we just got to get going and somehow we got to work it out. We had sort of, we had a bit of time, more time than we have on most films now. We had like three months to try and figure out what the film was. And I think, you know, again, Chris wanted some visual help. You know, he had these ideas, he had this uh, script. He was a very visual person. Uh, and he loves making models and stuff. I think he can draw and stuff. So it's, we work together in that art, in that garage. So I think it was really about trying to define every single element and then trying to figure out how this thing linked together. I think it holds up tremendously well and it, it's really striking. And, you know, at the time it, it felt um, kind of momentous. And I don't think we expected that you guys would one up it so significantly with The Dark Knight. Um, which at once feels, you know, a, a part of a whole. It, it feels in in step with Batman Begins, but um, you know that that film is very much inspired by Heat, and it feels like Gotham City is very much a character in that film. What was what was kind of your guys' approach going into that one? Because I, I mean, most people now hold that up as one of the best comic movies ever made. I think for me, I don't think it's true for Chris. Dark Knight is actually the Batman I always wanted to make, but we had to step over Batman Begins to get to it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, desperate modernist. I like simplicity. You know, Gotham, you know, on Batman Begins, you know, I struggled with trying to, you know, to make sure we didn't uh, destroy the comic book mess, I guess if that's a word, of, of what Batman was. And we tried to explain everything in the cave and, that was under Wayne Manor and how that worked, how you got down to it, you know. So there was a sort of lots of explanation in the design. And I feel, and I'm very grateful for Chris because he burnt everything down, Batman Begins. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Manor didn't exist. <laughs> Therefore, the Batcave didn't exist. 
So it allowed me, and on Batman Begins, we, we pushed and pushed and pushed to shoot uh, some of it in Chicago. Chris had grown up part, partly in Chicago, his mum's from Chicago. So we had this sort of lower whacker drive. We, we had a taste of Chicago, and Chicago obviously is where modern architect, architecture, it's this sort of, it, it's, it's, it's not his birthplace, but it's where it continued, you know, where, you know, Bauhaus went, where all the great architects who couldn't build in New York went to Chicago. So he's got this amazing architecture. So we knew, we knew what we were gonna do uh, if we got the chance to make a second film. And then the fact that uh, Chris and Jonah wrote to burn everything, <laughs> and David Coy, <laughs> obviously, um, was uh, uh, fantastic for me, because then, then I could say, okay, he lives downtown, you know, we're, we're dealing with Harvey Dent, we're dealing with government, we, government is like federal buildings, you know, it, it can be this sort of vision uh, of, of, you know, it has a hangover from the 60s for me. Um, and then, so that's where it led. And then the Batman girl obviously uh, was one of my favorite things to do. And actually one of the simplest sets I've ever built. So, uh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, I, I mean, one of the, I was there opening night and there were a few moments where the crowd, you know, was electric, but one of the biggest cheers I've ever heard in a theater is when the Batmobile explodes and the bike shoots out. Um, was that was that on you to figure out how that all fit <laughs> inside the Batmobile and could come out? That was actually a Warner Brothers um, executive uh, in, uh, in early garage times uh, saying, um, uh, hey, you know, the bike could come out of the car. And we sort of, there might have even been on, um, uh, on Batman Begins. I remember we kind of just like, Meh. You know, and it sort of came back to us. And I think, um, you know, it was, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, I think they're right. We have to pull the bike out of the car. And, um, you know, so then it became this sort of secrecy of, like, we couldn't say there was, you know, a bike in it. And we, you know, we, he has to sacrifice the Batmobile, um, you know, and we have to, the Phoenix has to arrive in the form of the bike. And so I remember we were very much in secret building that thing. Uh, and there was no point modeling it because right? we like to use models and you know, play with things because it was like, it was like, oh, we might as well just go to Home Depot and buy some parts and build it full size model. And then so we sort of snuck up to Warner Brothers and nicked the tires off the Batmobile and brought them back to the garage. But we couldn't tell anyone why we were doing it. And these were in the days when I could go to Home Depot with Chris and no one would recognize him. Chris, you go and find the, you go and find some plastic pipe. <laughs> I'll go and do this. So we sort of divvied it up, and then we go to the plastic store. And that, that those days have gone. I can't take him anywhere. <laughs> Nothing done. But um, but yeah. So I mean, that moment of of him destroying the Batmobile or, or the Joker. I mean, the, you know, the game is on. I, I I I agree with him. In fact, my favorite moment is is when it the the bike is going up, up a whacker at high yeah. speed and there's this sort of momentous speech at the end of the film. So, yeah. Uh, that film is, uh, is brilliant. And obviously Heath Ledger's performance is just absolutely iconic and, and tremendous. Um, and I know Chris had said he, he, you know, he tackled each film at a time, but was there, uh, I know there have been rumors that there was talk of bringing the Joker back for a third Batman if Chris was going to make it. Was that, were you privy to any conversation about that? Nothing that, I mean, and I'm there from very early on. There, there was nothing on Batman Begins. Yeah. There was none of that conversation. Um, you, know, they, you know, I think they need to stand as individual films. I mean, visually, they are, all three are very different. You know, they are, I mean, if you look at them, the difference between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight is like, you know, is, is immense. And then, then we went back to this sort of Raja Ghoul area you know where and then I, I think once we discovered because we shot most of dark night in chicago and we you know did this the interior sets in uh, in london in an old airship hangar in which we ended up keeping for 10 years or something and then dark night we you know in between what we've done is we did we've done these films in between the batman films like the prestige got slotted in there and we sort of you know that was very low budget so we 
we sort of slowly discovered the beauty and advantage to getting around locations and getting as many as possible. So by the time we get to uh, the Dark Knight Rises, we are going to like three different countries, you know. So, and I think, um, you know, and that really expands the scope of the film uh, practically. Obviously, we, we make films practically. We, um, we avoid set extensions and as much digital work as possible. Uh, obviously, it's in there because it has to be in there, but we try and not, we don't give over to it until we can't, we only do it when we have to. So, and that the question of when you have to is different for all people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for well, us, it's like, it really, really has to be an impossibility. Yeah. So. Well, and you say, I mean, the Dark Knight, you finally got to really showcase Chicago. Um, but coming to the Dark Knight Rises, it feels different and just absolutely epic. Um, what was that challenge like for you to come in for a third one and now make it feel visually distinct from those other two films? Well, we'd always, you know, on Batman Begins, uh, myself and Chris, you know, uh, I mean, I live in, in Brooklyn, so we always, he'd come over here, he'd just often come and write in New York. Uh, I won't tell you where. Uh, and, um, I get a phone call and so we again we go walking we walk the city and uh talk about what if gotham was here you know like you know what if the film wall was here so we always talked about new york but never never um never shot in new york because chicago it's, it's hard to shoot here and on to close down the kind of areas we would need to close down it, it's very difficult so we always talked about you know we play the film here and then we go to chicago which we both know. And then I think um, by the time we got to Dark Knight Rises, it was like, kind of have to film in New York. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of have to go, if we're going to do it, we have to actually finally play Gotham as New York. Because um, uh, on Batman Begins, we, begins, we walk around downtown uh, and, and say, okay, imagine if Gotham was here. Like, let's talk about how it could be here. And really that informed the prestige because we shot the whole of prestige downtown, uh, even though it's Victorian London. So, you know, so one, often these things, these ideas sort of flow and weave and we sort of, you come back to stuff that maybe isn't right for one thing, but you remember it or, you know, and the, the age old thing is we scout the next film and we find all the locations for the last film. <laughs> you know? 